Ah, there's definitely bones in there. I want to pick it up. All right. Come on. Oof. Gosh. Would not want that to happen in real life. Okay. No, 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 no. Oh, God, I dropped it. Hi, welcome back to the Paleocast Gaming Network. If you haven't been here before, I'm Caitlin and I'm a paleontologist. And today I'm really excited to be playing Dinosaur Fossil Hunter, the prologue, because it's a simulation of what it's like to be a real life paleontologist, which I already know what that's like, but I'm really interested to see if this game accurately simulates what it's like to dig up dinosaur fossils and then prepare them and put them on display in a museum. So let's take a look at it. Pyramid Games presents Dinosaur Fossil Hunter Prologue. All right, WSAD to walk around. This is a nice museum. All right, so Onithomimus, not Struthiomimus. These are Onithomimus, although very similar. Genus of Onithomimid dinosaurs, funnily enough, from the late Cretaceous of North America. So swift bipedal theropod, so that means it ran on two legs. Let's see what our nodosaur is. Edmontonia. Edmontonia was an armored dinosaur, part of the nodosaur family from the late Cretaceous period. Beautiful. And is this Allosaurus? Yes, Allosaurus. Fragilis is a genus of carnivorous theropod dinosaur. And was a bipedal Predator as well, obviously, running around its two legs. We didn't see this guy in the intro video. Some sort of Brachiosaur, but not Brachiosaurus. Oh no, it is Brachiosaurus. <laughs> Thought it might have been. Um... Oh, I've seen it in Germany in the Museum for Natakunda, and it is called Giraffe Titan. Sorry, got there in the end, <laughs> Giraffe Titan. Um, but this is Brachiosaurus altithorax. So a proper long neck dinosaur. But it's really cool. So I wonder if this is my museum and I'm adding to it or this is the sort of thing I aim to create. Let's find out. Your museum is starting to run out of free space and you think you've started, huh? When I was four years old, I loved to draw dinosaurs. Oh, okay. I guess we shall draw. Can I pick up this pencil? Yes. Oh, yes. There we go. <laughs> Using a mouse to draw a dot to dot rather does feel like what it's like to draw when you're a little kid. You just don't have the hand-eye coordination. The motor mechanic skills to actually hold a pencil. Oh, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Oh, there is an eraser. Right. Let's just fix up some of this. Why am I spending so long drawing a dinosaur? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay. There we go. Right. Continue. It was one of the most exciting days in my life. When I was eight, I found my first fossil. Oh, you have no idea how jealous I was as a kid of kids who lived in really fossil rich areas. Is that WASD? Yeah. Um, kids who lived in really fossil rich areas and could find fossils on their farms and stations and that sort of thing. That was not my childhood. Though I had a really good childhood and I grew up on a farm, but the age of the rock is just completely wrong for um, trying to find any dinosaur fossils, let alone any fossils. It's much, much, much too ancient. But I wonder what part of the world we're in here. What is that beeping? Is that a fossil? Okay. Um, how do I spin it around? Pick up using specs. Oh. I lost it six months later. 
Oh dear. At the age of 14, nearly all I could think about was putting together and painting dinosaur models. I was getting better at it. Oh, cool. Okay. Pick up part. This one comes with a manual. It's dead simple. Okay, so let's be a Brachiosaurus. Okay. This one's tougher. There's no manual, but I got just but I got the sketch at least. Alright, Stegosaurus. And head. Now is the time for the real fun. No manuals, no sketches, just sheer knowledge and skill. Oh, very sweet. Maybe I could use more practice and build one of them again? I mean, yeah, I guess. I even won the local talent show once. They loved my Triceratops. A couple of years later, the money I got as a reward in that competition turned out to be of an invaluable help. Adventure of a lifetime in your 20s? Well, I think it's possible. I was exactly 20 years old when I found an article about a paleontological group in a newspaper. Turned out they needed volunteers who were willing to work at the north of the country. It was a long shot, but I didn't want to miss such a great opportunity. I took a risk and signed up for the job. As you probably imagine, it paid off. So there are paleontological digs that you can volunteer on in different capacities. There are some digs in Australia, for example, at Winton. That's in the middle of Queensland, where you can pay to get access to a dig site and help the paleontologists dig up dinosaur fossils and they'll train you how to dig up those fossils properly carefully how to plaster the bones or wrap them in paper or muslin or whatever they need the things to be wrapped in a lot of bones from that part of the world especially from where i did my fossil work are in concretions so they are actually self-protecting they're in the bones are in a rock and you can see a little bit of the bone poking out but you don't really need to wrap that up it's pretty solid and yeah and there are other digs that i went on because i was doing my undergraduate degree in geology and paleontology i met the right people and was able to go for free except i had to pay my own way to get there so it was a very privileged thing that i was able to do but i got to go on these digs all right so am i just getting in the car I got all my gear. Got some sort of trunk and pickaxe. Need to have a geological hammer. Everybody needs a geological hammer. Oh, it's America. Right, I need to <laughs> get on the other side. Do I actually see an X on the compass? So there's a dot on the compass. And just looking at the headers two wheel drive, four wheel drive, diff lock. Interesting. See how rough the road gets. Again, okay, that is a problem. All right. Do I have an? Oh, I've got a chainsaw. Okay. Let's continue. If you're a first timer at a field site, you wouldn't be driving. A vehicle by yourself to well maybe to get to the site to begin with but not off-roading to get to the fossil site you wouldn't really know where to go all right lock the diffs four-wheel drive am i in four-wheel drive now yep there we are i definitely lock the diff no there we are drive. Nope, I'll stay in two-wheel drive. Good, good. Thought it was going to be a slippery road. Right. Oh, jeepers. How am I going to move that? Seriously? Oh, I would hate 
to have to use a pickaxe to chip it away at a boulder like that. I would not, in my experience, would not be something you would do. I don't know, maybe other people in other parts of the world have done this and they're gonna play the game and think, yeah, that's completely normal. If I smash it into small enough pieces, can I just drive over it? I think the answer is yes. If there's anyone else at this dig site before I get here, I'll be very annoyed because somehow they got past the log and the rock in the road. <laughs> or went a different way. I really like this though, that you've got this simulation of how annoying it is to get to your fossil site sometimes. A lot of off-road driving, a lot of driving slowly and carefully. Alright, park the car. Is that close enough? Yep. Hold space to secure the area. I'm... I'm not entirely sure what secure the area means. Oh, I see. Okay. And to set up camp. Right, you've got a message, press M to check it out on your tablet. Welcome to the mining area. A few weeks ago, miners came across something that appears to be dinosaur remains. We have managed to get the mine closed until the matter is dealt with. Given the fact that neither the workers nor the board of directors is happy about the lockdown, we have to act fast. The crew which was initially assigned to the case reports that the remains are perhaps the bones of Ornithomimus. They had to leave, but according to their reports, the area is still rich in precious fossils. Your job is relatively easy. Head to the marked areas, leave no stone unturned. The areas on your radar as well. The off-road car parked nearby is fueled and ready. We hope you'll be fruitful. I uh, probably had to read this before I left camp. Um, the missing bones we're looking for are a hip bone, a right arm bone, a vertebra. <laughs> Which, for more details, okay, for more details, check out the knowledge. Because... There are many vertebrae in the body. And right arm bone could be your front part of the bones. It could be radius ulna. It could be your humerus. Okay. Excavation workflow. We've got information that the perimeter is already secured and you can start the search right away. Well, I mean, I had to secure it. You're well prepared for the job. Your equipment includes a GPR, which you can use to scan the ground. So that's a ground penetrating radar. A shovel, a pickaxe and plaster to secure your findings. Start your work with an initial GPR scan. If you find anything, dig it out and secure it with plaster. You will receive further instructions on fossil transportation in future messages. Okay, so that's where I am. So I need to head left a bit. Nithomimus. I need left hands and legs. Right. Oh no, got that. Sorry, right hand bones. Okay. So the carpus and metacarpus phalanges and the hip bones that so could be the ilium the ischium or the pubis or all of them head and neck bones okay use ground penetrating radar we'll see how well i mean in the game obviously it'll probably work quite well it's not going to look well it shouldn't look like what it looked like in the original jurassic park well, it's not realistic and the way the ground penetrating radar works, as far as I'm aware, is you're looking at different densities of materials in the ground. So if you're at a fossil site where the bone happens to be more or less dense than the rock surrounding it, that is what you would see on the GPR. Found an interesting rock formation. Press left mouse button to use a flag and mark this spot. Use a shovel or pickaxe to search the ground. Okay. Probably use a shovel to begin with and want to gently scoop some layers of dirt up. Okay. 
really want to smash a rock at this stage. <laughs> Let's dig it up some more. Stuck in the hole? Yes. See, that to me looks like bone. But I think it's just the way they've drawn the clay. Alright, can I pick this up and look at it? Press L and B and rotate. Okay. That's pretty cool. I wonder if that's a photogrammetry of a rock. Oh, is there a bit of bone there? Yes, there is. Oh gosh, I wonder if that's a bit of skull. Ah, beautiful. Okay, you've found a fossil. Secure the finding in plaster and check out the knowledge tab in your tablet. And just gently place it back down. There's no space to drop that. Okay, I'll take it back to the tent and plaster. It would make the most... Well, not necessarily. You wouldn't wander around with it. Blasted. Okay. Now I shall carry it. Okay, normally plastering fossils, you're doing that while it's still in situ. So when I say in situ, that means in place, in the ground. So you'd be digging around the item and... Ah, oh, here we are. Please to put inside. But I just, like, threw that in there. I know it's got plaster on it, but geez, it doesn't make it that strong. Okay, um, yeah, you would dig around the bone in the ground, depending on what type of rock it's in, and try to and then plaster the rock, plaster the, or cover and then plaster the exposed bits of bone and then sort of dig pit, like a trench underneath the fossil. So it's, it's a bit hard to describe, but you want to create a little plinth of rock and carve out tunnels underneath it and sort of jack it all the way around and underneath and then at the end break off the two or three or however many little plinths and flip it over and jack it the other side. But you're having trouble sort of moving around the world and not getting stuck on stuff. <laughs> Which again is not too dissimilar from what it's like to be in the field digging stuff. Well, that is a huge hole I'm excavating. Ah, there's definitely bones in there. I want to pick it up. Alright, come on. Oof, gosh, would not want that to happen in real life. Okay, no, 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 no. Oh god, I dropped it. There's a lot of bones. There is definitely a vertebra in there and jack is it. I'm going to have to dig around. There we go. <laughs> Released it from floating in the air. So those are going to be the arm bones. So it looks like those two bits are going to be the ends of the radius and the ulna at the elbow joint. And this is the humerus. Also at the elbow joints. And there's another bit of bone there as well. But we probably won't know what it is until we get back to the lab and prep the rock. God, I hate chucking it on the ground. Okay. Alrighty. We've rescued this fossil from the mine site. You always want to have a good relationship with different mining companies and that so that when they know, and also it helps if there are laws saying that you can't continue work if you find fossils, but that does lead to some people just not reporting that they found any fossils. Um, but having a good relationship with these companies means that you can actually come in and get that material. They'll get good PR out of it as well, to be honest. And you get to do the science. Right. So, is that it? Yep, 
Okay. Warning at the moment. It's a right hand burn. I wasn't even looking at what crates I was dropping them into. I was just dropping them in. All right. Hoik that up onto the roof. It's pretty impressive this person is doing all of this on their own. Normally, depending I suppose, but normally your dig team is at least three or four people. But depending on the site and the type of fossils that you're picking up and how many you're picking up, you might be able to do it on your own. Beautiful. I did not tie down that crate on the roof. I really don't want it to fly off. Also for those three jacketed rocks those are huge crates and it's wasting a lot of space you just put them all in the back of the car bit of a rough ride as always the stress of trying to get back from your field site with all the things that you've just spent so long carefully well looking for and then you find it and you excavate it and then jacket it and put it in your car and then you just got to get the dang thing home all right unload the truck put the crates on the skids Once you're done extracting and securing the findings of the plaster, put them into crates and use your car to transport them to the transport hub. After you do this, use your tablet to send them away to your museum. How lovely and easy to do that. I'll click travel. Yes. Okay. That's done. Now I myself would like to go to my museum. How do I get there? Do I want to travel to the museum? Yes. I'm really liking this game so far. It didn't take me long to get to the museum, but even though the trip was quick, couldn't stop thinking about the job. I was constantly preoccupied with collecting and preparing dinosaur bones. When I arrived at the museum's lab, it was time to start cleaning what I had found. This part is really special. For one thing, it's a little repetitive and time consuming, but the result is always astonishing. Well, I'm really enjoying that game so far. And I have played it all the way through to the end, so if you want to see part two, I'll be uploading that part of the video in a week or two's time. So come back to the channel and have a look out for that if you want to see what it's like to actually prepare fossil bones and put them on display in a museum.